to Get Known, Be Seen Web TV. I'm your host, Trish Springsteen, and I'm here today with our special segment, Highlights of the Get Known, Be Seen Expo Workshop that was held in 2018. The conveners of that workshop was myself and my co-host today, Deborah Fay. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Trish. Welcome. And one of those authors that was part of that Expo and Workshop is our guest today, and that person is Di Riddell. Welcome, Di. Yay, hey, Di. Trish. Hi, Trish. Hi, Di. <laughs> awesome to have you with us. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Put some time out to come. I'm absolutely looking forward to our conversation. So thank you for having me. You're welcome. I think the first thing I'd like to ask you is what was your journey like to becoming published? You've got a couple of journeys in there, so uh, there's lots of journeys for me, but I guess the first thing is that I'm I'm really I was really an accidental author. I didn't set out to write a book. I was in recovery mode after the death of my husband which took me back to face some very challenging things that had happened in my childhood. And working through those and journaling and doing a lot of other things all added up to the fact that a book evolved. Incredible. Yeah, it, it surprised even me. So that was the journey for that. Um, but if I could sum it up in a couple of words, it was amazing, exciting, challenging, rewarding, um, and now that I'm working under the banner of Your Voice Matters, it's like I've got the right to stand up, stand in my power and speak my truth, and so do others. But for me, it's coming out through the written word. So, you know, the journey's continuing. It's not, I didn't sort of get to the end of the road because I first published in 2006 and then last year uh, I did an update and a, and a rewrite, um, the book being titled Beyond Abuse, so that sort of tells the story. And in the second book, I've included other men and women's stories because, you know, it's such a wide problem and it's not something that's getting any better. Every day we read or see on news about uh, abuse, that the levels are rising, they're not falling. So whatever's happening isn't working, but all I can do is do my bit, speak up about my experiences and make my difference in my world. Well, that really goes to the second question that um, we were going to ask you, which is what drives you to do or what drove you to become published? Uh, it's pretty clear there you're very driven to, you know, speak your truth and get the message out there about abuse and really shine a light on it so that there can be no, um, as they say, um, evil hides in the darkness, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely, because that that's mm. sort of comes to that. And um, if, if you could say, you know, what drove me, it was an inner knowing that my life experiences weren't in vain, that I could use my life experiences to be a role model, for want of a better word, um, and to show that no matter what happens to you, you can still go on and, and lead a rewarding and beautiful life. You're so such a is, great shining example of that, Di, seriously. Thank you. You mm. are. You know, through pain, I learned forgiveness confidence and love and then I learned that my voice matters and, and that love conquers all. Now just looking back a bit, um, for those who've had their voice suppressed, you now your voice is a human gift, it's, it's your, it, it's unique, it's you and even a, a thousand other people will go through different experiences but we can only speak about our own and I know when I was going through stuff it was people who'd been through similar that I was more likely to listen to. Not, not been through but survived and moved forward mm. because a lot of people who go through stuff and they sit in the corner and say, Paul, me, Dad didn't like me, da-da-da-da-da, the rapist didn't like me, da-da-da-da-da. Um, you know, you really do have to take control for yourself, mm. responsibility for yourself and, and make that step forward. And for me that came about through writing. Um, if I could just read this little thing, I, I used this in a um, segment that I that I. Um, worked on just recently okay. uh, for others who've had their voice suppressed your voice is your human gift and one to be cherished it comes from the deepest part of your heart it's the essence of who you are it's the source of your personal power and self-expression it's a human need to be heard and even if small it can still make an impact because silence leads to powerlessness and together they're a deadly combination that will keep you in the shadows 
I know. I live there. Because when you experience serious trauma, it's not uncommon for you to shut down and, and for your life to unravel. But it is possible to reactivate and tap into your inner strength and bring you energy and joy into your life and know yourself is peaceful, complete, whole and safe. I think that says what drove me to do it. Oh, it's beautiful, darling. Thank you so much mm. for sharing. Absolutely brilliant. And um, answers the question uh, brilliantly. Brilliantly. Thanks, Trish. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful world, words and I'm uh, just in awe of the power that you're using with your voice. And I guess we'll talk to you about now, but maybe some of the challenges you had to overcome to, to get these books published. What were some of the challenges? Um, can I just go back to the writing rather than publishing yeah. at this point? Challenges for writing would be good, yeah. To write the, um, to write the story, I had to go very deeply into forgiveness because for uh, the listeners, just, by, just um, briefly, I had a violent alcoholic dad who told me I was stupid, useless and worthless, a lot of violence in the home, and when I was 15, I was a victim of pack rape. So that's the basis and lots of other things happen, but that's where I'm coming from with the forgiveness. I couldn't write that book until I could come to a point of forgiveness to them mm. so that I could look at it from a compassionate and loving point of view. And that took a while to do. Mm. But I had to do that. Most people never get there. I had to do that bit, Deb, before I could step forward. Mm. And in that process... I learned love and compassion and I learned to embrace gratitude. Mm. Those three things just took me to the moon and back. But, um, and then from the publishing point of view, I was very lucky. I happened to be a national speaker at the time I, I wrote the original book and Robin Henderson. Um, Yay, Robin. Mm -hmm. books, uh, mm. She took me under her wing somewhat. So um, I did her book writing workshop and then she put, I did the writing and then she put me in touch with an editor and then she put me in touch with the lady who did the um, typesetting and the cover mm -hmm. um, and then put me in touch with the publisher. So she sort of led me along the way, even although I was doing it. And uh, I think the other challenge was when it came to the, um, oh God, what's the word? When you're finished and, and you, you display your book. What's the word? Oh, you launch it. Yeah. Launch. God, it uh, yes. <laughs> launch. Uh, you know, I, I still wasn't in a wonderful place. I thought I was healed, but in fact, I was only part, partly healed at that time. Mm. And people said, cast your net wide because they won't come. Um, so I did, and I picked a small venue that I thought, you know, I thought if I got 30, I'd be over the moon. And it went 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. <laughs> Um, at which point I knew we weren't going to fit and it happened to be at the big shop at Marichidor and I was on the, um, on the committee, the management committee for the Children's Therapy Centre and Harry and Margaret Reed, who owned that, they had a lot of property on the coast at that time, uh, they owned that property and Ma Ma Margaret was the patron. So I rang her and I said, Margaret, what would it take for me to be able to use the open area, which was like cafe style? Um, for part of the launch. And she said, oh, just let me ask Carrie. I'll ring you back in a minute. Two minutes later, she rings back and says, done. I said, well, what about insurance? And She said, don't worry about anything. It's all covered. Just go and speak to Harry. Gave me Harry's number and there it was. So, you know, it's when you start to step out. And true, I knew a lot of people on the case because I've been living there for a long time. And I know I put it out and we, we clocked in at 110. Very nice problem to have, darling. Yeah, it was it was just an incredible experience. Mm. What I had, and I think the other thing, the challenge that I had was I didn't know how my male friends would react. I've been in Toastmasters for many many years. Um, I joined mm. in the late seventies, and uh, it was a you know mainly an all male male organisation then. So I've got a lot of male friends, and the same happened to national speakers. And I thought I don't think they'd be openly against me but I doubt that they would publicly support me. I had an incredible amount of support yeah. from male friends. It just blew me away. Mm. A couple of people looked down their noses at me were at a speaking engagement and they were two women of my own age and I suspected 
they had issues that they hadn't dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not sitting in judgment of them. That's where they were at that time. But that was the only opposition that I had. So I was really, really lucky. So you really had to be courageous, didn't you? Um, allow yourself to be vulnerable. And this seems to be a common theme. I guess I didn't put vulnerability in there, did I? I didn't think of that. Mm. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to show my vulnerability now. Oh, mm. Beautiful. It's also good to see that we shouldn't make assumptions. We shouldn't mm. assume right. that uh, because we know somebody or because of what they do or where we know them from, that they're going to react in a certain way. Um, I, I think yeah. that's actually quite, um, well, probably arrogant of us if we do, and, and we do it quite often, but yeah. it's quite arrogant for us to make someone else's mind up for them. And that, that is something that's a really great thing that's come out of this for you is to, to not assume that just because they're male and you've got a book that's a bit different that they're going to be making those assumptions because what happened was it wasn't the males, it was the females. And it's funny how females are we our own worst enemies sometimes, just our own. That's, that's really true, Trish, and I think we found that in many organisations, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. We have. Really, we're all victims of the same programming, whether you're male or female. It's the same programming from that generation. That's um, right. Mm. Di, I'd like to know from you how you've actually leveraged your book, how you've used your book to move forward. Uh, in first half, shall I say that it hasn't been a money making exercise. And, and when I published the first book, Sandy Forster from Wiley Wealthy Women said to me, A book's an expensive business card. And at the time, I thought she was crazy. But now I see um, that that's very accurate. Mm. But money isn't the only um, criteria that you will use to say how you've leveraged the book because publishing that book opened doors to me creating and running a program that I call Women Moving Forward. I morphed it into a 21-day confidence challenge and I'm currently evolving it into Your Voice Matters, which is where I'm sitting at the moment. It created lots of speaking opportunities and lots of interviews for podcasts and programs. I know I probably did eight podcasts last year, mm -hmm. podcast interviews. Um, for a while I was hosting a, a web, a web um, blog radio station called Design for Confidence and at that time it was on 69 and on the line. Um, I've added a couple of years now so I'd, I'd have to find some other name. Uh, and I was interviewing amazing women with incredible stories and thanks to Trish because Trish was the one who got me into that. So, you know, it's our networks that support us, you know, right down the line. Mm. And um, last year I was one of 12 women on a program that was called Australia You Have a Voice. It was live streamed out um, globally and it was run from the Gold Coast last September. They were, they were just the highlights, but there was, they're the main things that have happened, I think. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. It certainly does, Sally. It is. It is as, as um, leveraging isn't always money. It's it's the yeah. journey. It's what you do of it. In, in fact, uh, the book is really insignificant. It's what it does for your credibility and for the perception of people, and then how you use that to connect with all the other messages that you want. And it's like a, it's like a diving platform. Really, you just dive off it. But it helps you dive. It's a bit harder. That's a great analogy, Trish. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Mm. Well, it is because you, you, you can go off the bottom ones. And you're not going to go very far and you make a bit of a splash. But your book is the big diving tower, the whole platform. And when you dive off that, mm. you've got so much there. It's so much more powerful. You make a big splash. So. Exactly. <laughs> big splash, big splash indeed. Mm. Uh, so, you know, they're the main ways that I could see that I've sort of leveraged the book. And mm. uh, it's just so heartwarming to see the difference that I've made in a lot of lives. I was going to ask you how being published has worked for you, but I think you've probably answered a little bit. And if there is something else you wanted to add to the publishing yeah, story, something, and it was a big thing, and I left it till this last question. Good. Mm. Um, when the second book was released in May last year, I had always said that I wouldn't seek, there are actually two children, it's a big long story, so there were two children that I adopted out in the 1960s as a result of life experiences. 
And I'd always said that I wouldn't trace them, but if they came to me, I'd be open to meeting. Well, the day that the link came up on Amazon, I mean, I knew what the colour was. I created it. As a matter of fact, Deb Fay created it. Um, as soon as I saw that live link, it was like something just went off in my brain and it's like, I'm ready. I'm ready to search. So mm -hmm. I went to my daughter, the daughter I gave up 50 years ago, and in two short months, I had found, searched, found, and met her. And she lives in Toowong, another suburb in Brisbane. Absolutely incredible. And we've been given that God-given opportunity to create a relationship. Now, I'm not sure how that will go. I know there's lots of stories. There can be the initial euphoria. We reach a little plateau at the moment. Uh, it's a big thing because she's created her own life and she's had a wonderful life with her adoptive parents. But it was a sneak preview to look back in meeting me. So, you know, it's an open discussion and it's something that um, I created. There's another organisation when I did that searching called, um, I've got a company of the name but now, but they're, they're, they're in uh, Coronation Drive and they're under the Benevolent Society, Adoption Support. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to one of their groups and I asked them would they record it for me and it was 18 minutes. I put it up on Facebook thinking no one's going to watch an 18 minute video and it had 1,850 views. Awesome. So I think adoption is a story. It, it's a subject, not a story. It's a subject that really touches lives. And as I'm talking to people and, and, and be moving around, it's amazing the people that say, I'm adopted, I'm an adoptee, my brother and somebody else was adopted, my mother or my father. And there are so many stories out there. And, you know, if I can make just that little bit of difference and encourage someone, mm. whatever the reason is, and I don't know what the reason is that I was that, that Sue and I have now come together, but we will see where that goes. And I'm just open to it. It's all part of the journey. It's part of the journey of writing, of publishing, of getting out there. So you know, I'm I'm really happy about it. Awesome. Uh, I've been a contributor. Oh, sorry, we're going to say something. No, no. no? Uh, I've been a contributor to two other books uh, with Emily Gower, Inspiration Bible couple of years ago and she's got another one coming out that I that I have contributed to yet very shortly called Our Infinite Power to Heal. And the other one was somebody, oh, of course, getting on be seen. Yes, of course. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember that. <laughs> and incredible connections that have come about through networking. Mm. So I've just been amazingly um, supported both professionally and personally through networking. The power of networking is just something that you can't describe. So, Di, is that something that you would say you got out of the Get Known Be Seen workshop? Networking? Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So what else did you get out of the actual workshop and the collaborative um, project, the book? Uh, there were the connections through Lauren. I, oh, actually, I was a guest on Lauren's TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, it encouraged me to go forward with the Australia You Have a Voice. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a fair bit to do with uh, Rhonda. Mm -hmm. And it was that whole process of encouraging me. And then through you, Deb, I've stepped into um, my new book, which will be Around Your Voice Matters. I'm not sure on the title, but that's the direction that it's taking. The work in progress, isn't it? Yeah, the work mm -hmm. in progress. It didn't work out time-wise as it was meant to because life got in the way for me at the latter part of last year mm -hmm. and it's actually had me reassess what my original thoughts were. Mm. So I'm just starting to write again now and, and starting to pull it together. Yeah, um, we'll have to revisit. Again, yeah, mm. I'll have to revisit it. And you know, it's a journey and it, and it doesn't matter. The mm. other girls might have moved along further and they've got their first drafts done but mm -hmm. I wasn't Place to do that and it would, I wouldn't have been happy with it had I pushed myself yeah. to write. That's got to be right. Time. Yeah. Mm, it has to unfold. It, comes it is when, evolved and it's evolving. Mm. It comes when it comes in, in the journey. When, it comes when it comes. Yeah. yeah. You sort of you create the space for it and then allow it. Um, right. Yeah, and I've got some space in February. So um, before we yeah. go to New Zealand in March, so I'm expecting that I will do quite well. Marvellous things, I'm um, sure. 
Okay. Mm. Uh, before we move on and go, two tips that you would like to share for those of our viewers who may want to write a book or become an author. What would you share? Two tips for them. Start writing. <laughs> Start writing. And get, seek and use support. It's yeah. out there. There are some incredible people out in our world. Talk to people. Put it up on Facebook if necessary to find the people that, that you click with. Mm. The network that you um, feel supported by and your writing will fly. Awesome. Very nice. Thank you for sharing out those two tips that I'll watch and really take away. They're very valuable tips and they're the essence of moving forward not only with your book but in everything else you want to do in your life. Just do it. Mm. Nike. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, of course, the support that I've had from you two girls has just been extraordinary. It's thank been you. fun working with you, Di. It really has. Enjoyed it. Mm. Mm. So what is the yes. name of your latest book? And where can viewers find a copy? Do you want to hold your little banner up there so people can see what it looks like? Oh, look at that spunky lady on the front. Oh, I know. Look at that. <laughs> so it's called it's the Young Beauty, a recovery guide for men and women in an era of me and all of us too. So it's not just about me. It's about all of the women and men out there because it happens to men as well that we can all get together and move forward. And that was that's the original book. Mm -hmm. And this is the second and Where can viewers find a copy for themselves? Uh, can you add the link? Can, can the link yeah. Just tell us what the link is. It's on my, it's on my website and it's on mm -hmm. Amazon. Well, I can't read it out because it's too long. Uh, it's also Amazon because Amazon, people can find it on Amazon. It's on Amazon yeah. and it's on my website. So and I can give you both of the links to pop up. At, um, so that's diradell.com? Yes, diradell.com.au. No, just .com. .com. Okay. Diradell.com. Yes, okay. awesome. And they'll know be able to go to Amazon and just search for the book. No. Oh, and I think the other exciting thing out of that was when it went up on Amazon, um, within three days, it was number one on self-help for beginners or new authors or something or other. Um, so I was tickled pink, oh, absolutely. Okay. Super excited. Selling author. That's all. Yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that, that was really a great plug for me. Oh. Mm, well done, darling. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Look, Thank you for today. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Thank you. I'd just be honoured to know both of you and for the, the fabulous work that you do in supporting other women. And for me, a huge thanks. Oh, thank you, darling. It's been our honour and pleasure to know you as well. Yeah, it has. Thank you, everybody. Uh, you've been watching the highlights of Get Known, Be Seen Expo and Workshop from 2018. We've been speaking with the absolutely awesome Di Riddell, who has shared parts of her journey today and some great tips for people who may want to get going on writing their own book and their author. So it's goodbye from me, Trish Springsteen, and it's goodbye from my co-host. Bye-bye. Until next time, bye. Bye.